Today we're going to be talking about SVG cut files for use with a Cameo Silhouette or a Brothers Scan and Cut type machine. We have the SVG cut files on our website and I will be showing you where those are located. Those are used to cut uh, the applique shapes that we have patterns for on our website and on the quilt on the bottom right hand corner you see the tapestry design that was cut using one of our SVG files called tapestry uh, that's the example that I'm going to be using today so let me get the camera zoomed in on the computer and we'll get to work showing you where those files are located on our website and how to download them onto the software and get one cut out. If you go to our website at www.urbanelementswithaz.com, uh, this is our home page. What we're going to do is go to the patterns and books and look at the first drop down. You'll see patterns applique. We click on that will be taken to this page and what we want to do is go over here to our subcategories and we're going to go down to SVG cut files and this opens up the page that has all of the SVG cut files that we currently have loaded on our website we will have eventually all of the patterns but these are the ones that are there so far we have up 90 and if you just click on any of these it will open up the pattern and give you the options. You could order this as an applique paper pattern. You could order it as an applique self print design at home or you could order it as the SVG files which would be used on the Cameo Silhouette or a Brother Scan and Cut that you would download at home. Uh, this particular set is $28 for all 10 blocks and it also gives you the information for the uh, fabric usage for this particular quilt. But the SVG files would allow you to use your own fabric without having to use our fabric choices and it allows you to use fabric out of your stash which a lot of people really want to do when they're making a new project. So you would just click on any of the items that uh, you wanted to see and each one of them has their own SVG file option available for that. If you see an applique pattern on our website that you would like that doesn't have an SVG file, you could email the office and see when they would have that one ready because often they could go ahead and get one ready in a couple days and have it loaded on the website. Here's the Daisy Dots Small. It has the SVG file and this particular one is only $3.50. So you can see they're very inexpensive and it's a great way to use up some of your fabric and your machine at home. So next we're going to go ahead and open a SVG file in our Cameo software and show you how to get one cut. Once you have downloaded the SVG files onto your computer, you're going to find them uh, in your download storage area. If I go to downloads, you'll see here is my tapestry zipped file. And there's going to be a couple different things in there when I open that up. I'm going to have some JPEG files the JPEG files will have some things that you can print off to use as a color guide or a placement guide. The first one is going to be uh, the four components all together of the tapestry. You have four repeats to circle to create a whole block. And you can print this off <coughs> but this is wider than the paper so it's only going to print off the center section. 
<laughs> the next one is just an individual unit. It's one uh, completed section, and this is good for color uh, choices or color placement. Uh, but it's just a way for you to get an idea for color because you're going to be using your own fabric. The next one is the tapestry block. This is also a PDF. And then the next one down you're going to see it says SVG document. This is actually the cut file for the block itself and this is what we're going to use to open up in the software to get our uh, cut design. And what I'm going to do right here at the top, I have the link on my computer for this design and while I have that open I'm just going to go ahead and copy and pay, uh, just copy that link so when I open the Cameo software when I go to open the design I already have that link location so I've clicked my Cameo Studio uh, software and I will say this is the designer edition and you have to have at least the designer edition to open up an SVG file and that is an upgrade from the original Cameo software. But I think the upgrade was some, somewhere like $25 or $30 when I did it. Now I'm going to go to the second icon here, which is a file folder that's half open. I'm going to click on that to open a file. And right down here in the file name, I'm going to go ahead and paste that link that I had copied and hit OK. Now that's going to open up my tapestry design and a couple things that I will tell you about the grid here. The red line is showing where the cutting is limited to. Anything beyond the red line will not be cut. Also each one of these squares in the grid is one inch so that's one way of taking a measurement of your design but also you'll see when I uh, select this item that it will tell me what size it is at the moment and what I'm going to do is hit control and A at the same time and it has selected everything in the design and you can see here on all four on the two sides that it is giving the measurement in inches for this design I know from my uh, pattern that the design that I want is about seven and a half by eight inches. One thing I will tell you is that when these designs open up, they don't open up to the exact size that the pattern was meant to because these designs are scalable, which means you can make them bigger or smaller. And I'm going to do that just by grabbing one of the little handles and moving them. Now as I'm moving it, I'm looking at the inches on these and I know I want it to be uh, about seven and a half by eight inches. I'm just going to get it close. Now right now I have the design at seven and a half by eight inches. The mat itself is 12 by 12, so it may look like it's a little bit small, but that is the design I need for my printout. And right now, everything would cut off just as it is when I send this to the machine. It already has its cutting instructions and it will cut it all as one unit. 
but I want to separate some of these pieces because they're really close together. And if I went ahead and cut this as it was, where some of these little tiny points are all meeting up together, the machine might have a hard time cutting really close lines together and keeping clean cuts. So what I'm going to do is ungroup this design so that I can play with each one of these little pieces separately. I'm going to keep them the same size, but I'm just going to separate them a little bit on the design so that when they go to the machine, it will cut a little cleaner. So I'm going to go up here to Object, and I'm going to go down to Ungroup. And it will be a little hard to see, so I think I might zoom in one more time uh, with the camera just so we can get a closer look. Now each one of these little components has its own little square floating around it. And what I want to do is select these one at a time. Okay, I had to deselect all of them because they were all active at the same time. So I have one active. I'm just going to move that pedal away. And sometimes it will uh, make a copy. Sometimes it will just drag it off. But I've separated that, keeping it in the same general direction. And I'm just going to pull these apart a little bit to make the cutting a little bit easier. Some of these, I don't exactly know why I don't use this all the time. Uh, sometimes when you grab these little pedals, it will pull the pedal away. Sometimes it'll make a copy, so I'm just deleting the original when it does that but I'm just pulling these design components away from itself a little bit so when the knife is cutting through the fabric it gives me a little bit more space so that the fabric doesn't shred and uh, make a mess out of the cutting. I just have found that um, it makes it a lot easier for cutting when they're not all bunched together, all these tiny little points. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to separate this design out and then I'll show you sending it to the machine. Okay, I have all of my pieces separated but they're in generally the right place. They're all inside the red line, and none of them are overlapping each other, even though that one's a little close. I might remove that one. But if they're overlapping, they're not going to cut out both shapes. Anything that's hanging off of the red line would just get sheared off, because nothing will cut beyond the red line. If I were using multiple colors of fabric, I don't need to cut all of them at once. In this case, there's purple and blue and a medium blue, a light blue. If I were only going to cut the, all these purple ones, I would have removed all the rest of them off of the side of the mat without resizing it. 
Then I would come back after the next cut and do the next colorway by dragging the next color onto the mat and the ones I didn't want cut off. So anything that I would drag off of the mat will stay the right size, but it will not get cut. But I want that one cut, so I need to put it back. So now I'm ready to go ahead and send this to the machine. But first I have to make sure my machine is on, which it isn't at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring the camera out and get the machine on and we'll show you sending this to the Cameo for cutting. In the original piece that I did, I used a single piece of brightly colored batik to match the uh, pieced color selection that was in the quilt I was doing. So this was a single piece of fabric which I thought was also nice. I didn't have to run through the cutting multiple times. So this is an example of what my fabric looked like for that particular design. And here's just a couple other options. This would be really beautiful in the autumnal colors if you were doing a fall quilt. And today what I'm going to be doing is using this striped ombre fabric, which is a batik. And I'm going to go ahead and fuse my Steamaseam 2 onto a piece of this and get it ready to load in the machine. I'm just going to iron my fabric so there's no wrinkles in the fabric. My piece of fabric is already uh, 11 inches wide. So the Steamaseam 2 comes with the fusible web in between two sheets of uh, stabilizing paper. And the one sheet, the plain side, peels off much easier than the, the uh, gridded side. So we're going to peel that off and I'm just going to get it placed onto the fabric. And this piece does not require steam. And what I want to do is make sure there's no wrinkles in the paper. If there's any wrinkles in the paper, I actually do want to peel that back and uh, smooth it out and then re-iron it onto the paper because any wrinkles on this paper are going to get caught up on the knife on the cutting machine. So I would cut this off and get it ready to load onto the cutting mat. So I have my striped ombre batik on one side and my uh, steam is seen too on the reverse side and I just want to freshly iron that and make sure there's no wrinkles in it. Another thing that I want to say before I get started, my particular design doesn't matter if it's uh, going left or right. It's not uh, a design that you know would be backwards. It could go either way. So I did not mirror image this. But because of the way I cut my fabric with the fabric side down, if I were doing lettering or something that had an orientation, I would flip it so that when it gets cut out and then reversed, that it will be the right way. I don't need to do that, so now I'm just going to go ahead and get uh, my fabric onto the mat. The mat comes with a protective sheet that you take off when you're going to load your fabric. And what that does, it protects the glue. And I'm going to go ahead and load my piece of fabric right 
onto the mat, making sure it's stuck down good. I want to get out any wrinkles with my hand. Sometimes the mat will lose its tackiness and what you could do, because it gets lint on it from the fabric, what you could do is take it into the kitchen and rinse it off with water. You don't have to scrub it, you just wash off the lint and just let it air dry and that brings the tackiness back. And then you'll go ahead and load up the mat with the arrows and hit the load button. Now my mat is ready for me to send the design to the machine. In the upper right hand corner you'll see an icon that says send. If we go ahead and click on that, you'll see that it's sending the design over to the Cameo Silhouette. If you can see now, all of my items have turned red. That's indicating that each one of these is going to be cut out and that there's nothing overlapping anywhere. That one's a little bit close, so that might be a little bit tricky. If I go back to design, I just separated those two a little bit and I can hit the send button again. It'll go ahead and send edited version. So now you can see I have clean separation on all of my pieces. And you get to select up here what you're cutting. In my case, I'm using a cotton print. I've switched the action to cut because this uh, cameo silhouette will also do drawing and other things. And I'm going to come down. It already has uh, auto select on here. So I'm going to do a test. The blade is clicking through all of its different settings. And now it has uh, clicked it into the right height for my selection. And so I'm going to hit send. And you can see it's starting to cut. One of the things I will also tell you that I do quite often is I make myself notes. And I've made notes with my label maker right here in the uh, lid of the Cameo Silhouette. I have my fabric face down. Steam is seam is freshly ironed. It's not loose on the fabric. The design has been spread out. And I did a reverse image if I needed to. Now the machine will just go ahead and continue cutting until all of these pieces are finished. And depending on how many pieces you have in your grouping is about how long it will take for that to work. Um, I have on there uh, the mat that is 12 by 24 inches. So I could have done two of these at one time, but I didn't want to overcomplicate the process. Also, one thing you need to know, if you have a machine, I'm sure you know this already, that this mat goes in the front and in the back of the machine, so the machine does have to be pulled away from any obstacles in the back. And depending on how well I have done the settings on the cutting, you'll see in a moment how well the 
pieces come up off of the mat. One of the things I liked about using this multicolored fabric was that once the design is all put back together, it will have a color gradation similar to what different fabrics would have done. Now I could have uh, paid attention to which way the stripe was going, which way the colors will go, um, and that would have made a difference, but this piece is already going. If I just keep them all going the same way, then each one of them will look the same when all four blocks get put together. And just like that, the whole piece is finished. I'll hit unload, which takes the mat out of the machine. And then when you peel that off, you'll start to see your pieces emerge. Now mine did not cut as cleanly as I would have liked. So I may do another run. I have loaded a second piece of fabric on there. The first one wasn't cutting deep enough. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and send the design. I have increased the cutting force and the passes. So it's sending the cut design to the machine now and it will go ahead and cut out this shapes again. Hopefully giving us a really clean cut. You really do have to test this with different pieces of fabric uh, because the fabric cuts differently. But this is one of the reasons why I cut with the fabric face down and the steam seam on top. The knife, to me, seems to cut easier without catching on the fabric with the smoothness of the paper on top. When I put it down with the fabric facing up, it seemed like sometimes the knife edge was snagging on the fabric and I wasn't getting really precise edges. So that's why I particularly like to use the fabric face down when I'm doing the cutting. And I did also change the orientation on the second cut of the fabric stripe because I thought about it a little bit more and I wanted the color to change from uh, top to bottom rather than side to side. But that's purely just on my fabric. Wouldn't have any impact on yours. But you do have to think about how you load the fabric on there. Um, if there's any directionality to the pieces that you're using. But in most cases, the, the end pieces are so small, it really won't be a factor anyway. I've asked the machine to do double cut on each piece just to make sure we get a really clean edge. I haven't used the machine for many months, and I don't remember how sharp the blade was. Uh, so I don't have a replacement blade. So I'm just letting it cut twice. After these pieces are finished, I would just take them off, very carefully keeping the orientation in the correct place, and then lay them on top of the J JPEG file that we printed off. Lay them on top of here, just to keep them in the right position until I was ready to use them. I do like that you could uh, use any of our designs with your own fabric to go ahead and get the pieces to match more of the fabric that you were using on a particular project. So it is a really great way of customizing uh, applique design for your quilt fabric. Um, you could use vintage 1930s, uh, all different colors of batik and brights 
whatever your theme was for your quilt, you could go ahead and use that fabric in this uh, process and it would allow you to tie everything together. So you're not uh, stuck with our choices. And so this will finish up in just a second and we'll go ahead and get it out of the machine and see if we've done a better job with the cutting. I've pulled the piece out of the machine and I'm just going to go ahead and start lifting up on the corner and you can see my pattern pieces are all there. If you have a piece that didn't quite get cut out you could use a little exacto knife. That one was really close to the edge so it didn't get cut. So there's a couple little pieces that didn't quite get cleanly cut off. But for the most part they have come out So I would just use the X-Acto knife to cut that one piece. Sorry to leave you hanging there. But I would just go ahead and cut that one piece and then everything else pretty much came off except for this one. So you have all of your pieces all in the right position and then I would go ahead and take these off piece by piece and lay them on the pattern and keep them in shape. But you see you kind of have Swiss cheese when you're finished. But that's the basics of downloading an SVG file and sending it to the machine and get it cut out. So I hope this is something you'd like to give a try and look over our selection on the website and see what you think.